So we want to break these chemical formulas back into their original components. So we have on this side Na plus and SO4 2 minus, so the sodium and the sulfate. This one is the potassium, the K plus, and the CO3 2 minus, so that's a carbonate. And the final one is magnesium, which is 2 plus, and the chlorine, which is minus. Now, all of these were done by memory, so they were memorized as being these charges. But what happens when you don't have actual elements or polyatomic ions? So if we had, for example, X2Y or XA3 or X... 2m3. So how do we find what the charges on the x, the y, the a and the m are in each of these compounds? Well if we think about it we go back to our sodium sulfate over here we take this 2 and it will move back over to the SO4 because it was cross multiplied to bring it there. This then becomes the 2 because it's on the right side this is our anion so it becomes minus. Again, with the 2 down here, we can take it back over and it becomes a 2 minus for the carbonate because it's on the right side, it's an anion. Now, the magnesium doesn't have a number down here, but it's going to move back. So what is the number? Well, it's a number 1. We don't need to write the number 1 in a chemical formula. It's assumed to be there. So this then becomes minus 1. Again, right side, anion, it's negative. So what about our cations or the ones on the left side? We'll start with a simple one. For example, the chlorine here has a number 2 down here, so it's going to go back and over to the left side, and it becomes a 2 plus. That's a cation on the left side, so it's plus. Now, the CO3 doesn't have a number there, but it's assumed to be a 1. Again, we do not have to write the 1 down. So we take that back to the left side, and we end up with plus 1. Similarly, the SO4, the sulfate, doesn't have a number there, so it was a 1, and that becomes the plus for the sodium. Now, they could have been memory, but we could work them out, so if we don't know them. So what about something a little bit more complicated then? And we'll do Al bracket NO3 bracket 3. So we'll start with the right side. The aluminium here doesn't have a, a number there, so it's a 1. Move it back. That means that the NO3, or the nitrate, is minus, or minus 1. The 3 here moves back and over to the aluminium, making aluminium 3 plus. Now using the same principle, we can undo these X and Y ones. So we'll start with the 2, take it back to the right side. It will become 2 minus. The right side is the anion. Remember, there's a 1 here that we don't need to write. Take it back to the left. The X will become 1 plus. Here, we can undo the 3, taking it back to the left. X would be 3 plus. It's on the left. It's a plus. There's a 1 here that we don't need to write. Take it back. A would be minus 1. If we take back this 3 to the left, it becomes X3 plus, because it's the cation on the left. And if we take the 2 back, the M will become 2 minus, because it's the anion on the right. Now, if we have something like X, A, we're not really sure of the charges. Right, but they could both be 1. We could have plus 1 and minus 1 because that would give us a neutral or zero charged compound. Or they could be both 2, plus 2, and a take 2 would give us a neutral compound. Or they could be both 3, etc, etc. So we don't really know what they are, but we know that they're the same equal but opposite charges. So you can't tell but they need to neutralize each other out for the compound. Thanks for watching another Wertho production.